All right, so we've made our way now onto the, the west side of the road crossing here. And so we're in our last stretch of today's exploration. And so we're going to make our way westward here to uh, the next road, which is Mackenzie Beach Road. I'm just sort of scanning the, the ditch here and see if I can see maybe a, a flanger sign. I didn't see anything on the way east. Uh, we got about uh, just over a mile to go, I guess, or a mile since we just passed where milepost 181 is, and then we have to pass milepost 182. So our next stop is coming up in a bit here, so just uh, in this section gets a little quieter, there's a lot less things to kind of look at, so just sort of uh, just sort of enjoy the view. Uh, another culvert here with no uh, no marker on it. So here we have uh, another little rock cut, uh, not particularly long, not particularly big, just kind of a itty bitty little one here, maybe three feet high. And then we're passing through another little kind of grown in section here. You can see quite an, quite an abundance of, uh, of tamaracks. And you can see the very uh, beautiful color here and uh, all of the needles on the ground as well. Kind of makes for a very, uh, very scenic ride. Little bit of rock work here. Just uh, very, very beautiful and cold. <laughs> Let's not forget the cold. Here there's a, uh, it looks like a telegraph pole in the ditch. Yep. No trace of the, no trace of the cross beams on it. And I believe we do have something coming up here. So what we have is up here we have there's a culvert it's a modern culvert um, but what's happened is uh, when they pulled out the old segmented concrete culvert uh, they left it behind and so this is always kind of neat to see um, I'll take my helmet off anyway, I could probably leave it on so you can probably see it okay all right so you can see the segments of the culvert here it's a pretty large diameter culvert I would say it's a five footer, right? Just judging by my height. And so you can see the sections here with the, uh, the appropriate graffiti. I guess, who doesn't like ACDC, right? All right, so here again, you can see these, uh, these sections here and the creek is just right over there where they pulled it out of. So we'll hop back up on the grade here. All right, so we'll uh, we'll jump back up on the bike here in a second and uh, just continue working our way to the west. Okay, back pedaling here. So here we're just passing the spot where the uh, those concrete segments were pulled out of. Again, no no mile post markers, which is um, every every culvert on this section here that just has no absolutely no marker on it. So. We just have to kind of guess where the uh, where we are in terms of the mileage. So here again, nice little section. You notice here things kind of seem to open up a little bit. 
Uh, it's not as grown in, maybe a little bit more kind of on the south side here where you get some kind of conifers growing up on the uh, on the side of this little cut here. But uh, things seem pretty open on the on the north side. We've been going through a lot of uh, a lot of curves here. It seems like it really starts to straighten out as well. So you can see it just kind of dead straight uh, in front of us. All right. So what I'm going to do is uh, because it's straight and there's really not a lot to see here, I'm just going to kind of zip you ahead for the next little bit here. Okay, so around here somewhere is uh, supposed to be milepost 182, but again, no uh, no trace of a milepost marker anywhere, unfortunately. And I believe our destination is just up ahead there, which is uh, Mackenzie Beach Road. All right, so we're uh, we're coming up to the end of today's exploration. Again, our destination is just right up ahead there, uh, Mackenzie Beach Road, and then beyond it, the grade continues obviously to the west, and it crosses over the Mackenzie River in a very short distance. So we've already done that section of exploration. Uh, we actually did that last week. So I'm going to pull up just a little bit short of the road because I don't want. I'm going to go and coat too close to the road and uh, I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to get her cleaned up a little bit and get her in the truck since she decided to go and roll in something. Okay, so we paused here just before we got to the road. We're actually filming this two years after we did the original video. So we did that back in October of 2021. It's now October of 2023. Uh, and the reason being is that we have some information about uh, some things that were happening here. Uh, so on old timetables uh, at milepost 132.6, which is uh, 182.3 on the Kinghorn, uh, we had a series of spurs that were here. You can kind of see this little Little bumped out area here on this side here and then it actually looks like there's something over here as well so I don't know if it was kind of moved around uh, or what was sort of going on so uh, from 1921 to 1924 there was a two-car spur that belonged to the Thunder Bay Lumber Company uh, and it was attached at the west end, so attached over on that side there. Then in 1925, uh, it was taken over by the Western Contractor Company, and it was uh, their number two spur. Uh, again, I believe it was a two-car spur. And then from 1927 uh, to 1931, there was a five-car spur here. 
belonging to the Scott Lumber Company. Uh, now that might ring a bell for some people uh, that live in the area. So the Scott Lumber Company was headed up by a guy named William Scott. William Scott was originally from Wisconsin and he was one of the um, guys who originally created the Pigeon River Lumber Company. Um, uh, along with uh, Daniel Arpin and a few others uh, back in the late uh, 1890s. And um, basically, uh, he ran that company for a while. And one of his sort of more well-known achievements was he helped to build the highway from Thunder Bay, from Fort William Port Arthur at the time, down to the international boundary, linking up with a road that was coming up from Duluth. And, um, you know, the subsequent bridge that was built across the Pigeon River. Um, and uh, for, for a long time, and there's still some people that are around, um, some uh, some senior folks that still call Highway 61 the Scott Highway, uh, as it was called. So uh, again, th this uh, this spur was uh, operated by the uh, the Scott Lumber Company from 1927 to 1931. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flash up uh, some timetables here, so you can you can have a look at what was happening. All right, so maybe I'll uh, I'll stop here. Okay, so hopefully you've uh, you've enjoyed today's exploration and some of the things that we've uh, we've seen. Again, it was kind of a bit of a quieter exploration, not as many kind of super crazy things to uh, to take a look at. Um, Again, we have done this section here, so make sure you check out the uh, the videos for that section going west here from Mackenzie Beach Road all the way to Grandview Beach Road. Uh, and so we will be back just as soon as we can with more exploration, so stay tuned.